Good morning, class. I wanted to make this video to help you guys understand how to get started with our table total inside your brown bag. Um, you guys are going to pull out this Manila folder and this plastic bag full of supplies. The paper that we need from here, you guys need to find a couple things. Um, first of all, this tan sheet, it's the same color as that folder. So we're going to use this for our base. That means it's going to be the surface that we build on top of this, this sturdy tan sheet. Um, next, if you guys notice, there's these smaller sizes. These papers we're not going to use at the moment, so I can leave those in the folder. But these colored sheets, I want you guys to pull out these colored sheets. There are a bunch of these different colors. They're the full size sheets. We're going to use those. Um, you guys might notice there's also a very thick sheet. It's a white sheet. It's for watercolors. I want you to leave that in the folder. You'll notice there's some texture on the paper. That's how you know it's the watercolor sheet. It's the thickest sheet. We want to leave that in the folder. And we also want to leave there's this, the biggest white sheet. Yours might be a little bit longer. Leave that in the white folder as well. So the only things you guys need to have out are these colored sheets and this tan sheet of paper. And I want you guys to grab some scissors. And from this bag, I'm going to grab this glue stick. And if I decide to do some coloring on my, my objects, I'm going to grab the color pencils. Everything else I want to put away. So you guys can see my workspace here. You guys can see um, my color papers, my tan sheet, colored pencils, um, scissors, and glue stick. So uh, the first thing you guys notice, you guys have one, basically one color for each of these sheets. So I need you guys to think about uh, what color, what color is going to be your totem pole. So let's say that I want to make a green totem pole, and you guys notice you only have one green, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off some of this so I can use that green for other objects too. So Look how tall this is. I don't need to use the whole sheet to make the totem pole. I'm going to cut off about maybe 30, 40 percent. I'm going to put this with my papers. I'm going to use that later for grass. But right now, I'm going to work on building the pole. Um, in, in order to build a pole, we have to build a cylinder shape. And to make a cylinder shape, what you're going to do, you're just going to roll, you're going to roll this into a cylinder. And you want to glue the outer edge here. So watch me do this. And the other edge goes over top of that glued edge. And I want to hold it tight for about 30 seconds.
put some more glue. Make sure it's not. Make sure those flaps are strong and they're closed. Okay, that looks that looks decent enough. Um, it's it's holding up well. But now our issue is how do we connect this pole to this base to the surface? Um, so I want to show you guys something called something that I call the the flap method. And what it is, you're making these flaps on this object or on any object, and it gives it surface area so you can glue things down and connect stuff. So what I want to do is I want to make those flaps by all along the end here. Just choose any side. You want to go all along the end and you want to make cuts. I'm just going right alongside of it. Now I'm just making the same size cuts. And the whole point of this, I should be able to make, pull those out like a flaps. And that gives me surface area to work with. Boom, boom, boom. Make sure they're the same size. You see how some of mine are uh, too high? I need to cut those a little bit more. And now I can actually use those. I can glue those down. I can put glue on them. And then this will be the connecting point for my object to my surface. So from here to here, I want to hold down. There you go. Now I have a pull okay and you guys can see to the to this side you guys can see my my objects that I sketched out um, and you can see at the top of my pull uh, there's there's a monk there's something sitting on the top so I'm going to show you a few techniques and then you guys can use them for your objects um, first I want to say a lot of people they they're afraid of uh, 3D, right? This whole project is 3D, but if you just love 2D stuff, there's also ways to make that uh, work for you. So let's say that I love, I just like 2D things, and I'm afraid of, I'm afraid of uh, trying to make it all come out and make it look all three-dimensional. Um, you guys can still use 2D drawings, but I'm going to show you a way you can use those 2D drawings to make them stand up. Um, so it looks pretty cool. So let's imagine that I want to add some things here. Let's like a tree, okay? A uh, couple things you guys can do. You guys can draw out your objects. Let's say I made a simple tree, right? Very simple tree. What I want you to do when you cut that out, you're going to leave a flap on the bottom. So watch me cut this out. I'm going to leave extra space at the bottom. So just like this has a flap, I'm going to show you another way that the flap is going to help uh, bring up your objects. They're going to make your objects pop out. So let's quickly cut this out. Okay, and I'm leaving this flap on the bottom of my tree. You guys can see this extra flap. Okay, what I'm going to do there, I'm going to fold it. So now you see, this is the this is when you glue this down. This is the the connecting point to my object for it to be 
three-dimensional for it to stand up in some way. So you guys can do that a lot for, for uh, natural elements. You can do that a lot for uh, grass. So let's, let me show you a few things with this. Let's do it with some grass here. Let's imagine that I want to make some grass. I can do the same thing. I can cut up some grass. I'm just going to cut up some real some spikes really quickly. Just a simple technique. And I want to fold so I get that flap on the bottom. And, and again, now we have that bottom support. That flap be becomes our support for this 2D thing to become uh, standing and more three-dimensional. Okay? So that my tree is being a little wonky there. But you guys can see. So that's a, that's a lot of different ways you guys can use those techniques, the flaps. Um, and there's something called a fringe cut, which you can also do. Fringe means, it just means you're cutting like this. You're just making a lot of these cuts all along the same lines. This is good for textures. This is good for grass. I'm just making the same cut. Just cut. Boom, 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 boom. And then you can kind of ruffle them up. And those are called fringe cuts. I can, I can use this bottom for, um, for that flap again, except it'll be a little bit more interesting than this grass, right? It's a little bit more chaotic. So that's a cool cut. Um, Another thing I want to show you guys, how to make the top. So, let's imagine that you see my drawing over there. Um, right over here. Um, that way. Right that way. You see my drawing and, and it, has a t it has a top and it has a monk sitting on top. So I want to, I want to make something for the top. I think I just want it to be a, just this rectangle. Maybe we'll make like a rectangle. Let's see. It fits well. It fits well on there. Um, so my problem now is how do I connect this to this? And I like using strips. So when you guys are doing something like that, it helps to cut out strips to make the connection. So let's say that I have these two strips. I'm going to put one on every side. I'm going to fold this in half. I'm going to glue both sides. And now both of these sides need to be connected. One needs to be connected to the pole, like that. And the top one needs to be connected to the underside of my, my ceiling. Let's do the same thing on this side. Fold it in half. glue both sides. One side connects to my pole. One side connects to the top. To the underside of that top. So again, that's that's like using strips, almost like the flap method. And then I showed you guys how to use um, the flaps to make things stand up. Let's see, what else? I want to show you um, layering also. So let's say I want to make that monk guy, right? I have a monk. I'm going to get some orange. I want to make a monk sitting up here. So, that's one of my objects. I'm going to cut out the basic. You guys remember we used Google Drawing? We used Google Drawing in layers. So, I want to cut out the basic, uh, the basic color and outline of that monk. And just like we did in Google Google Drawing, we use layers, so I want to I want to treat this object with layers. And what I'm going to do 
I'm going to cut out the, the silhouette or outline of my monk. Something like that, right? I want to make sure he has, um, and I want to add certain colors over top to add some uh, some of his clothes, some of some more features I can draw on him. So let's make some pants for this guy. So I'm gonna cut out. Oh my God! Come on. Boom, boom. So I'm gonna cut out that purple. I'm just gonna paste it over top. That kind of becomes like a quick, quick pants, and maybe I want to draw. Maybe I want to fill in his his head with the color, like yellow. Maybe draw a face on him. He's smiling or something. So you guys can also draw on these as well. I'll focus on the paper aspect first. Um, Let's see. Let's make him stand up too. So I'm just going to do a quick version. I have my monk. I want to make him stand up. He's sitting on this, not stand up, uh, at least pop up. He's standing on this, he's sitting on this um, top platform. So I'm going to use the flaps again. And one side is connected to the back of him. And the other side is going to be connected to to the surface. Okay, so now I have something. He's 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 upright. Okay, I want to show you one last technique, um, and that is called uh, I'm just going to call it the slit method. Um, it's where you make cuts. Let's say I want to make clouds um, next to my my monk here. What I'm going to do, first of all, let's cut out the clouds with our white paper. Let's just make a few clouds. So there's one. Let's make one more. I like cutting out big shapes first, and then I like kind of being more specific into what I really need. So let's say we got these two clouds, right? And I want to make sure I want to show that they're next to my monk. How do you? You can use the flat method, but there's other interesting ways to also um, make uh, interesting design, and that is using the slit method. So I need to figure out. Uh, where these clouds are going to go and I'm going to make a cut let's say my I want to make a cut right into my cloud shape it's about an inch and then I'm also going to make a cut right into that surface and what these cuts are going to do they're going to kind of interlock and I want to push both the cuts together and they combine and uh, they help each other pretty much stay in place. So I got one one cloud there. Let's do one closer to the monk. So you guys can see I have a couple of techniques. Um, I use the flat method. I showed you guys um, the fringe cut. Um, I showed you guys how to build a base here. I showed you guys uh, some of the layering. I didn't go too much into the layering, but you guys can remember Google Drawing. We are adding more colors on top using um, using different colors. And I showed you guys the slit method. So this this will give you guys ideas on how to um, make your objects and how to fill up uh, the surface and the pole with uh, with your with your ideas that you have.
I hope that helps. Um, this should be a good starting point. All I want you guys to do is think about those 10 items you came up with and how can you include them on the surface and on the pole, okay? This is a great starting point. Of course, I would take more time to um, add the rest of my items. I want you guys to use the slit method, use the, the flaps, and definitely use the layers. That means adding more colors on top. I hope that helps, guys. Let me know if you have any more questions.